Hi beautiful, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I will be trying a few new products, specifically these two new products from Maybelline and this is from their Total Temptation line and I only purchased the ow. I only purchased the eyeshadow palette because it's very unique. It's something new from Maybelline and this this includes eight shades of eyeshadows so we have the warm everyday side and then we have the cooler tone side and then we have two highlighters which i am actually excited to play around with and then i purchased this eyebrow pencil and this one is fairly interesting because it has a ball spoolie the spoolie looks something like that and I like the fact that it has a lid and it's teeny tiny it's perfect for brushing out all the brows and then the other end has got the triangular shape to it and it's fairly thin which I think it would be great for filling in the brows also something came in the mail and this is the ICMA no color powder. Oh my god, I have been trying to purchase this product for the longest time But it's always sold out. So I managed to find one from Beautylish and this I think costs around $12 US so it's pretty good and I ordered a bunch of other stuff from Beautylish as well So we will try these three products. So without further ado, let's hop right into the video. To start this makeup look, I'm going to prime and I'm going to use my Hourglass, uh, what are you called? Mineral Veil Primer. I have not used this for a long time. Skin update. My skin is actually doing a lot better as you can see. Everything is mostly flat. I'm just dealing with scars at the moment. You could easily cover that up with makeup and it's not sore or itchy. I normally don't fill in my brows on camera but because we have a brow product to try. So I am going to use this spoolie. To brush my brows. So I normally start lining my brows from the inner part to the outer just to get the outline. And I got the shade Deep Brown. First impression, it glided on so smoothly like I'm barely touching my brows. It has a waxy texture. It's not too creamy which is good and it's actually relatively easy to use. For the inner part right here, I like to feather it a little bit up and then I'll use this side. Because it is a little bit waxy, I kind of find it hard to fill in the patches on my brows. So I have to go over it a few times. But so far it's not that bad actually so i'm going to do my other brow off camera because if i do it on camera we will take forever so the brow product is not bad it's actually not my favorite as well but it did a decent job though i don't really like the formula because it's waxy but then it's quite pigmented at the same time and i find that whenever i go through um the brows that i've already filled in with light strokes it creates like patches so I just went over it with a brow gel and now we're going to move on to the eyes so I'm going to prime my eyelids with the AOA concealer just like my other makeup tutorial because it helps with the longevity of the eyeshadow as well as it makes it show up this is the total temptation shadow plus highlight palette from Maybelline and I love the fact that at the back it tells you how you can use the palette so you actually can create two individual looks using this side right here which is more of like an everyday bronze neutral and you can also use this side right here which can be everyday slash more glam cool tone look so I think I am going to venture with the two shades. Since this side right here doesn't have any um, matte shades, I'm going to take this cool toned, somewhat 
purpley beigey shade to set my lids. Wow, it's very pigmented. So I'll place that oops, I'll place that all over my eyes. It has a little bit of kickback, so just be aware of that. Also the pen is a little bit domed, so you can accidentally pick up other shades as well but that doesn't really bother me that much so for transition i am going to pick up this shade right here which is a nice um peachy shade and as you can see it's a little bit powdery but very pigmented that's actually a nice transition shade the shadow blends very smoothly it it's not patchy at all, which is a good thing. And usually Maybelline shadows are actually really good. To deepen up my transition, I am going to use a somewhat tighter crease brush. And I am going to dip my brush into the shade right here, which is more of a deeper browny peachy. And I'll focus that over here. So that shows up a lot better on my skin tone. And I'll bring that in the inner corner as well. So that blended out really good actually. Again, same issue, it's a little bit powdery. But you know, honestly, I don't really mind palettes that are a little bit powdery and has a lot of kickback. As long as they blend beautifully on the eyes and it doesn't cause a major fallout on my face. To deepen up the crease and the outer V, I'm going to deepen to this brown shade with the same brush. Stamp that over here and do a circular motion. How powdery that looks. So I'm going to go back to the shade right here and blend that. I might actually dip into this black right here and just use that to line my lash line. Nothing too crazy. I think I am going to go and use this golden shade right here. Which is that there and it's so pretty and very pigmented. And then for the inner corner highlight, I might use that pink shade that has like a silver flex to it. It's that one right there. Oh, they're both so pretty. I'm going to use a flat brush to pick up that gold champagne shade. You could also use this as a highlight as well, like a face highlight. That's so pretty because usually drugstore eyeshadows that are shimmery, you can't really get a pigment when you pick up with a synthetic brush. Usually you just get a wash of color, but this one, like it shows up. So I'm going to try and pick up a little bit of my finger. Oh my god, that's so pretty. So I'm going to go back to that darker brown right there to really deepen up the outer V. I am going to go back to the transition shade, which is that one right there to blend everything. I'm not going to put on some false lashes because this is more of like a daytime look. Unfortunately, I did not pick up the Total Temptation Mascara which is probably the hype of the line because in the past, I, I've gotten a few different Maybelline mascaras thinking that I would not have any allergic reaction but sadly, my eyes don't really like Maybelline mascaras. I'm not sure if it's the ingredient or whatever they put in there. So I did not purchase that mascara. So I'll be right back to finish off the eye and then we'll move on to the base. I'm going to keep it mostly Maybelline, at least what I have in my collection. I'm going to use this Maybelline Matte and Poreless Foundation. This is a little bit too light for me and I tried warm honey and it's a little bit too orange so i'm just gonna go and stick to the shade 310 
and I love this foundation because it blurs my pores as well as it doesn't go greasy on my oily skin also the coverage is built for concealer I am going to use the A True Wine concealer and I literally use this every day and I'm almost below halfway the shade is definitely a little bit too light for me but because I have extreme darkness underneath my eyes it works perfectly and every time I have like a darker shade of foundation i like to use this to highlight and it neutralizes everything and it's very light lightweight and if i need a little bit more i could go over it one more time and it doesn't cake up my under eye area which is really good so now we are going to try this ICMA no color powder. I'm actually quite nervous to try this powder because one, it's already so messy and two, the packaging looks like a salt shaker. So I'm going to put this in a palette. So I'm going to take that much. I'm not going to bake underneath my eyes because I don't like baking anymore so I like to pack on powder and dust it right away. Hopefully this one won't create a white cast. But so far it is making my face feel smooth. It, it kind of blurred out my pores actually. And it made my skin pretty smooth. Do you guys see that? I don't like that. I feel like that powder highlighted my dark circles to be honest. Because for a moment... It was bright and now it's back to being dark again. Mm, damn. So that powder didn't really work out for me first off. So I'm going to just put this 5th Avenue powder, the brightening side, on top of that. Because I do not like my dark circles to be in hand. Well, that sucks. Because I know that um, Kathleen lights really like this powder and she raves highly about that powder but I feel like all the stuff that I tried to cover it definitely highlighted it it left like I don't know if you can see like a bunch of powder is gathered and like the coverage that I have with the foundation definitely disappeared and now it looks like I didn't even put any foundation at all. We'll fix that in a bit. So we're going to move on to the eyes. I am going to use this shade right here on a dense smudger brush. And just smudge that all over the lower lash line. And then I'm going to go and use the darker brown and focus that on the outer V. For inner corner highlight, we're going to use that pink silver shade. We'll see how this one goes. Oh dear. The shade is actually quite pretty, but it has flecks of glitter, which is a little bit chunky. And I'll just finish off the rest of my face and we'll come back and do the highlight. I just need to fix this mess. Tried to fix the powder and my face as much as I could but we're just gonna have to deal with this because honestly I don't feel like doing my makeup all over again the eyes are pretty though so to highlight I am going to use this golden shade right here so that's what it looks like it's a pretty pretty gold that one right there and then this pink silvery highlight is that one right there it doesn't really show up on my skin tone though but it has like chunks of glitter so what I will actually do is use the shade right here and the mixture of that gold because I find that the good the gold is a little bit too gold so we'll mix them together pop that I mean, it shows up, 
but not intense. Actually, we'll switch the brush. So I'm going to use this brush right here, which is like a blender brush. Oh, that's so pretty. It's a little bit glittery though, so if you're not into that kind of highlight, I don't think that you will like this, but it's pretty. So I'm applying the Maybelline Color Drama Lip Pencil. And this is one of my favorite nude because it has that terracotta undertone. I will try to revive this look by just because the RCMA powder made my skin look very very powdery no, and not in a good way. Devastated about that. Here is my final look. So my final thoughts, I don't mind I don't really like this Maybelline brow pencil that much. It's not terrible as well. So it's just like an okay product. Like I would use it until I finish it. But would I repurchase it? Probably not. In terms of the eyeshadow palette, this is actually a really, really nice eyeshadow palette. Especially for everyday wear. Like you have your transition shades right here. You have this one, which is a little bit matte that you can use to set your lids so this are the swatches of the neutral side and it's that one right there they're quite pigmented though it doesn't really show up against my skin tone because again i'm more of a medium tan skin tone and this would prefer preferably work on people with light to medium skin tones but then again it's workable like it's very true to it being transition shades it did show up on my eyelids a little bit which is a good thing so now i am going to swatch the cool tone side so the cool tone side are this again they're terrible swatches i know but you already know it that's why i don't really do swatches in palettes because like Shades like this can swatch very patchy, but then in the eyes, they could blend a lot better or they could be worse. So yeah, here are the swatches if you guys are curious. This eyeshadow palette has got a lot of fallout. The shade right here, it has like a chunky glitter. So that's the only downside of this shade. But the rest are very pigmented, very smooth to the touch, and they're very blendable. For a drugstore palette and for an everyday wear, I definitely would recommend this eyeshadow palette. This is probably a good powder for some. I don't know, just the color of it didn't work. Even though it says no color powder, I find that it highlighted my dark circles as well as my acne marks and it sucks because it made this foundation wear terribly like i have like cakiness around this area right here which never happens whenever i use this foundation and if i set it with the coty espan loose face powder so unfortunately that rcma powder did not work for me stay tuned for the next video and i will catch you then bye